This is Alex Pierce, alexpierceproductions.com, and welcome back. This is part two of basic stitching in Auto Pano Video Pro. So basically what we did in the last one was we synchronized, we saved the project, and we did the basic stitch. But now we need to go in and do some tweaking, and I recommend doing the next steps for any video you do. Um, you don't have to get into like the serious advanced steps that we'll cover later on in other tutorials, but the, the, the things I'm about to go over I think are important for any, any stitch. So you get there by pushing edit. So we push edit and it's going to open up this project in Autopano Giga. Okay, then we click on edit here or we double click here and then it'll bring it up in the main viewer. So uh, there's a few different tools to use up here and at first when you first look at this it probably looks a little overwhelming there's like oh man there's all this like what's going on you know it's really not that difficult once you start once you've used it for a while it's pretty it's actually pretty straightforward stuff the first tool we're going to go over is the move images mode so if you click that it allows you to move the image and you can do some again you can do some basic adjust adjustments here but you can't really straighten out the vertical lines with this tool. It's just more or less what do I want to be the center of my picture, you know. Right now this footage is at the Western Wall in Jerusalem for those of you who didn't know. And that's going to be this this is the Western Wall here. So we're going to make that the focus of our we'll make that the center of our composition here. Okay, the next thing I almost always do is I go to masking. So if you go to mask edition, <coughs> you can see these are the different video. These are the different clips. If you click on this button here, preview, it'll show you how they're stitched together right now. And right now, we're using a blend mode called ISO. I'm not going to get too much into the blending modes today, but I I think it is worth mentioning that about Smart ISO, which would give you sort of a different thing here. But masking is more effective. I don't want to say it's more effective. It's it's easier to show in uh, ISO blending mode. So I'm going to show you that right now, and we'll get into blending modes later. So even just hovering over, you can sort of see where it would be helpful and where it wouldn't. So these, there's not really much difference. There's not much difference. But if you look at this tripod here, you can see that it. Oh well, in this camera, it it helps. It gets rid of some of the tripod. So what you can do is you can click either up here you have keeping markers or removing markers so right now I'm on keeping markers so if I click here so I'll show you again if I just move it here it's gonna cut that part of the tripod out you know this this is a great tool for a lot of different things a another thing is so this is this is my dad here so he's sort of a main subject I'm over here and I'm also sort of a main subject so it might be good to give us some wiggle room so if we move left and right you don't want us to get cut off you know at the head or whatever so what I would do is I would just yeah I would I would give this main subject as much room as you can a lot of times I'll, I'll mask the sky because the sky will be a, a, a better it'll be darker so if you if you have a, a piece where this is nice dark blue and then these are sort of overexposed here I would mask in the sky so that you have uh, uh, if you uh, sorry, if you right click you can remove current marker, etc, 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 but re remove current marker is what I'm going to do here. So I might, you know, mask in the sky just to, so that it's all uniform. But yeah, the masking tool is huge. It makes your life much, much easier um, in the stitching world. So that's the basics of the, the masking tool. I will note that in earlier versions of Autopano uh, Giga, you had to use either one or the other either removing either removing markers or or keeping markers and that's a practice that most of us have just we've just sort of stuck with it we, we either use one or the other and I think it's probably smart to just to do that anyway but yeah that's just a little bit of inside knowledge there okay the next tool I want to talk about is the straightening tool so the verticals tool the verticals tool is how you get these areas to be straightened so if I click and drag it'll this is what it gives me and what this does, I'll show you, so you right click, you can remove line. You want to basically find all your vertical lines and then draw them. So I always do it this way. I click here and then I kind of move it like that. It's important here to zoom in, especially if you have something far away like this. Because 
it's it's kind of easy to 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 be off quite a bit if you're not zoomed in. And so basically, you want to get as many verticals as you can. Jerusalem's kind of a tricky place to do vertical lines because some of these buildings they've been there for quite a long time. Like this one, maybe at, you know a few thousand years. So so you know straight lines are going to be easier on you know modern architecture for sure. But you can still get a, a pretty good idea uh, of the vertical lines. And the other thing you can do is, if you don't have any vertical lines, say you're shooting a landscape, if you look at this yellow line, you see the yellow line there? Th if you line that up with your horizon, um, that's one way to do the verticals tool as well. So then, yeah, then let's see. This is kind of vertical like that. Okay, now I'm going to zoom out so you can see the difference. So I'll zoom out and I'll push either enter or I'll push check and you can see it sort of straighten things out a bit it's also it's usually I usually go back to move images mode and do a little tweaking after I've done after I've used the verticals tool so if you move it a little bit and just look at all your lines you can kinda get it more or less where it's supposed to be and that's that's pretty good I might go back and try again using different lines I might do that I might use the verticals tool. I might try four, four or five different times to, to get it right, because sometimes adding a line on a building that's either crooked or you know somewhere can can really throw it off. But you get the idea. I think you get the gist of how that that tool works. Okay, there are more tools, but I'm going to get into those in the next episode. For now, go ahead and click Command Save or File Save, and then it'll update in Auto Pano Video. This is Alex Pierce, alexpierceproductions.com.